What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteNext.com. Today I wanna to show you one thing to do before every time you squat that I promise you is gonna help you. Now, if you have knee problems, this is gonna be an absolute godsend. Trust me, as someone that has knee problems themselves, it's gonna really, really change the way you feel the next time you step under a bar. Secondarily, if you're just someone who feels like you can squat more, right, that you should be able to squat more than you are, I promise this is gonna help as well, right? But here, it starts with defining really what the squat is. And biomechanically, to me, it's a marriage, a synchronization between the amount of knee flexion we get and the amount of hip flexion we get. And we know that hip flexion is critical, the hinge is critical for loading posteriorly. So we need to have both components because this movement is and always will be driven by the glutes. This is a glute movement. Right? And we could feel this for ourselves. If we were to just take our hands and put them on our butt and we go down here and we just let the knees go, you've probably seen people squat like this, by the way. Right? You know, the knees go, not only is this a recipe for disaster for people with knee pain, a lot of times it's the people that have knee pain that are doing this too, which makes it worse, but you get no glute activation here. And likewise, if I were to take my hands and keep them here and go more into a straight hinge, I definitely feel more activation here and loading of the glutes without the contribution here of the knees but we don't nearly feel as much as we do when we get the two working together. We actually get a hinge and a knee flexion at the same time. So we know we need to get those two working in concert. And the best way to do it, to prepare ourselves to squat, is not actually to squat. Because if you already have these issues, if you're already performing the squat with a lack of that proper contribution from both the knees and the hips, then what you need to do is focus more on that main muscle driving that, and that's the glutes, and we actually do that over here. And this is with a hip thrust. Now we could do it guys up here on a bench in a barbell hip thrust, classic barbell hip thrust. It's gonna require more range of motion, but even just as a beginner activity, just, or even someone that's been you know, squatting for a long period of time, but hasn't done this prior to doing a squat, try it here from the floor, because it's gonna be very simple. And again, I'm not into spending a whole lot of time doing this guys. You guys know I don't waste a whole lot of time with warmups. The, the, the fact is what we're trying to do is just neurologically wake up the muscles that are supposed to be contributing to the squat in the way that they do so when we actually squat. And that is we need to get the hamstrings and glutes to work together and we need to get them to work together through flexion, combined flexion. So if I get down here on the ground, what does the hip thrust do for us? Well, here's flexion of the knees, I got flexion of the hips, right? And what we do is we train the hamstrings and glutes to work together because we know the hamstrings have a secondary role beyond just knee flexion to drive us into hip extension with the glutes. Well, that's what the, what the hip thrust does. So I take the bar, I drive it down into my thighs, and I lift up. Now, I hold it here. Because again, I'm trying to awaken the muscles of the posterior chain. We're gonna explain why in a second when we go back to the bar, why it's so important. But I wanna wake them up. And I wanna get the hamstrings and glutes working together, which is exactly what the hip thrust does. And I drive and allow myself to feel the hinge, number one, but control it as well. That's gonna come importantly when we go back to the bar. So we come up, and then feel the hinge as we go back down. Now, a secondary thing we could do here, which I think is beneficial, is to actually allow the feet to be a little closer together and the knees to drop out to the side. So what this does is actually externally rotates the hips and gets the glute medius contributing as well, which is usually very dormant or inactive or not necessarily willing to be ready to squat unless you do something like this. So now we perform the repetitions like this. So you can do two sets, either both of them with the knees further out than the feet or alternate. Do one set straight ahead and one set down. Why does this work so much? Well, even during that, that, that uh, bridge, we have some degree of flexion extension of the knee, right? Which helps to warm up the knee for those that have even just some issues with knee pain because they're not properly warmed up. But more importantly, what's happening is when you have an unwillingness to load posteriorly, the knees take the brunt of it. So if I get under the bar here and I don't load posteriorly, I tend to be more knee dominant. The knees keep traveling forward and they keep traveling and as you go down, taking on the load down and into the kneecap, which we call it hanging on our tendons and ligaments, our connective tissue. We get a lot of strain, particularly on the patellar tendon, if that's the case. We need to be able to load more in the posterior direction. So we get up here, and with a, with a willingness now to do so, we can get our glutes involved 
here so we can sit back, take that anterior force off of the knee. But more importantly, the hamstrings, as we said, that were active on that hip thrust are trained to eccentrically control hip flexion. Remember, they have a secondary role. Forget the knee flexion. Hamstrings are not flexing your knees to get down to the bottom of the squat, right? They don't do that. Gravity just takes you down. I don't have to flex my hamstring to get me down to the ground. What they do though, as a hip extender, is they eccentrically control hip flexion. So if I have eccentric control here of hip flexion, I can get down there in a, in a, in a confident way to be able to position myself now with a properly loaded backside. Now, how does it fix the ascent? The second and most important thing you can do from the bottom of the squat is synchronize your upper torso and your pelvis to move together from here straight up like that. If you lack either activation of the glutes or proper strength of the glutes, what ends up happening is you get a desegmentation of your torso and your pelvis. So you go down, you might look good, and then you do this. There, up, and then up. Right? Desegmented. Down, come up, you load there, you bail, because you don't have proper, uh, you're not driving the movement from your glutes, you turn it into a low back until the glutes can contribute, and then they come up and try to do the rest of the work for you. If you do the hip thrust, you'll train your body to let the glutes be the main driver. That is a glute driven exercise. Let the glutes be the main driver of the movement, especially from a hinged flexed position. That will carry over well to the point when you get down to that bottom of the squat here and you gotta drive up with a straight bar path. Because as soon as you do that, the bar path has changed. You wanna be able to come from there and let the glutes drive straight up. And if that glute medius is active as well, the knees will be able to maintain that proper outward positioning that we know we need to maintain proper mechanics of the squat from the bottom to the top. So quickly, don't make it a big deal. Start your workout over there, and then come back over here. Just two sets of about six to eight repetitions, hold for three or four seconds at the top, and then come over here and do this. I promise you, if you're somebody with knee pain, like I mentioned, you are going to feel so much better just by doing those two sets before here. And cumulatively, as you do this, of course you'll be working your hip thrust into your regular training as well, you'll start to get less and less problems over time. And for the guys that should be squatting more, sometimes it just comes down to an activation. You just don't have proper activation before stepping under the bar and repeating the same pattern here with the squat itself is not enough to break that pattern that you get from actually targeting them directly through the glute bridge. So if you found this video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. If you haven't already guys, subscribe and turn on your notifications. And also head to athletics.com Start using the science, put it back into what you do. It will help you to get more results out of your training a lot faster. In the meantime, finish this, do your workout. And of course, you got your face pulls as always, always at the end of every workout. Add this, guys, I promise it'll work just as well. See you soon.